God of War Ragnarok Assassin's Creed Valhalla 4 Ragnarok The Halo Map Valhalla Ragnarok Okay, one day as a society will move past Ragnarok and Valhalla being the only Viking words in Western media but not today, baby. Today we're looking at Raiders of Valhalla, an auto-battling roguelike. Wait, how did I forget about God of War, Ragnarok, Valhalla? That's got to be the worst offender right there. So auto-battlers are not really something I've ever gone into before. But I like Vikings and I like roguelikes, so here I am. Starting graphically, Raiders has a simple pixel art style. When I say simple, I mean simple. Characters are not animated. Battles can quickly devolve into an episode of South Park mixed with an action figure commercial. It's goofy, but fun, though I would have appreciated seeing my Viking actually swing his legendary sword that I spent a few thousand gold pieces on, but I digress. Arrows do fly around, spells of fireballs and lightning do pop off, the bosses get to move around and their attacks are animated, it's almost as though they've been dropped in from another game. This all becomes a bit messy when the game is actively encouraging you to fast forward through these encounters, as the real gameplay is the prep work you do before the battle, and this is really just watching your choices unfold. Also, the fast forward four times button is tantalizingly right there. The audio of these battles become a garbled mess and easily tuned out until the success sound plays through, bringing all of the chaos to an end. The gameplay is centered around preparing for these battles. Recruit Vikings, buy weapons and armor, attain synergies based on the Vikings' traits and stats, and then send them off to battle. There are side objectives to complete along the way, which drop some pretty juicy loot, far better than the loot dropped by fighting through the actual levels. The main goal being to put together a well-rounded team with good synergies, solid weapon choices, and the occasional relic or pet. Weapons and items can also be forged together to make new items. I thought you could do the same with dwarves, but the game looked down on my attempts to create a viking abomination. The game will not tell you that this forging system is quite limited, Combine a level 2 sword with two level 1 swords to get a, a level 2 sword with the same stat line as the level 2 sword that you put in. That's disappointing. The game could do a better job of explaining itself in general sometimes. There are walls of text at the start, but not much in practice or in context, or at least I found. Even with that wall of text, you are left wondering how best to squeeze the extra drips of damage or survivability out of your smelly band of ruffians. Early on, the game will scream at you about mega progression, which is just bullying, as you'll only hear about meta progression when you have an item which you can't use yet. If you're going to give me stuff I can't use, just give me something else instead. Once you die for the first time, this becomes a bit clearer, but fuck you if you're having a really good first run, I guess. Variety within battles is a bit limited. The enemies you encounter are the same as your Vikings, with the same weapons and the same armor. It does let you visually distinguish how superior your enemies are to you before you take on a battle, but in the heat of the moment, it feels a bit samey. It's the action figures analogy from earlier, but instead of two different action figures, you're just slamming two Spider-Men into each other. They just look out of place next to the bosses as well. Why are Vikings fighting for a monk? Why are Vikings fighting for a wolf? Who takes employment from a fucking necromancer? Ultimately, and I'm not meaning this as an insult, so let me explain. Ultimately, Raiders of Valhalla is an entree of a game. Sometimes you want a game that satisfies all of your senses. Seven courses of wonderment, branching paths, a winding narrative, and compelling gameplay. And then sometimes you want a game that you can just shovel into your face while you watch the sports ball. Easy to hold in one hand and goes down smooth. That's what Raiders of Valhalla is. It's a good game to enjoy alongside something else. We've talked about the podcastability of games before and Raiders transcends that metric and is great to engage with during any other vocation, from wood whittling to lovemaking. Perfect for the days when you want to do two things at once. 
Okay, I'm, I'm taking this a little bit far now, but you get the gist. Slay the Spire and Shogun Showdown are both two fantastic games, but there's space around them for you to be doing something else at the same time. And that's how I feel about Valhalla. And it sounds really mean, but I don't mean it to be. And there is a place for these sorts of games in our world. But it did make me feel like maybe auto battlers ain't for me. I want to be a bit more tangibly involved in the violence, which I think says more about me than the game. I do get the appeal. It's like people who are really into setting up a row of dominoes and then knocking them down. I'm more about having someone else set up the dominoes and then lobbing a basketball at it and watching them all fly in 50 different directions. That's just me. But what do you like to combine video games with to make a mixed media evening? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't say something like, I like playing video games while I drive my big rig. I will sue you. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye! The Viking Experience!